Welcome to Drawing the Beauty of Nature. This is Mindy Lighthype, and I welcome you to the wonderful world of watercolor. Watercolor is a wonderful medium to work in for all nature subjects. For this lesson, you will need the following supplies. One of the worst things that can happen to a watercolor painter is in the middle of a painting, something like this happens, where all of a sudden on your beautiful painting, you've got a paint splotch. And right now it's wet, and if I were to move it, I could actually get it to run and drip. And the first thing that normally happens is that there's a panic mode that you go into, and you want to get a paper towel, and you want to go in and start pushing really hard. Try to refrain from doing that because what you're actually doing is you're pushing the pigment further down into your watercolor paper. I like to use a high quality paper towel like Bounty or I believe uh, there's Viva and there's probably others that you could use. And I get a clean one and I come in and I try to get it to a point and I actually, not pressing into the paper, but I actually touch the side of it and what ends up happening is that the paint will actually go up into the paper towel. So what I'm doing is I'm not pressing it into the paper, I'm actually trying to get the paint to come up into the paper towel. I'm putting the least amount of pressure. Now that I have gotten that much paint from that little area, that's less paint that I have to remove later on. The next thing that I will do is I will let this dry completely. It's very important to allow your paint to dry. I know that there's a panic mode where you just want to get rid of it and all you can see is that and uh, the hours that you've put into it and you fear that you've ruined your painting. But please, don't touch it. Leave it be. Get as much of the moisture up as you can by using the paper towel and then it, let it dry completely. I now have allowed time to pass and this is no longer wet. It's completely dry. The next step that I come up with is I actually will use Mr. Clean's Magic Eraser Sponge. This is something that I've been able to purchase in the grocery store and it's used in household supply cleaning. I've torn off a piece of it and I'm going to come in with absolutely clean water. It's important that you don't use the watercolor water as your container might uh, have some residue of paint in it. So I'm actually using a drinking glass at this point and I've gotten some, some tap water. I'm going to come in and I'm just going to take a little bit of the corner of this small piece and wet it and then I'm going to squeeze out as much of the water as possible so that just the edge of this is slightly damp. Here's another tool that can be very helpful in the process. This is called an eraser shield, and it's a very thin piece of metal. And let's say, for example, that this droplet happened next to an area that you were painting. So if this was a flower or a leaf or, or something, and this you wanted to cover up the area, you could use this eraser shield to shield your painting so that as you're doing your erasing, this will not lift up. All right, so I have the area, the corner that is slightly moist, and I'm gonna come in in circular motions and very, very lightly buff the surface. You may see little tiny particles on the surface, and you can see the, the sponge is turning pale green, and this is getting lighter. You can come in, dip, squeeze out, and come back in and move in elliptical motion. And you'll see that there is some debris on the surface of the paper. The motion is fairly light and the little bit of particles that you're seeing should not be the paper but the actual sponge itself disintegrating. If you press too hard you risk the damage of ruining or destroying the paper. So again, you can also come in with your clean piece of paper towel and you can blot the area up and you can also remove any of the debris that you see. I don't really need my eraser shield so I'm just going to go around 
very, very lightly. Sometimes the paper will lift up, the watercolor paper will lift up. I usually go further out from the area to blend any pigment that may be left over. But again, do not press too hard. The next step is to let this dry completely. Okay, I can see a little bit of the paper, but we no longer see any of the spot that was there. So I'm going to let this dry and we're going to come in with the next step. It's hard to tell with this white against white, but there is a little bit of um, the paper having come up, uh, it's frayed, from using the sponge, even though I used it very lightly, this is 300 pound paper, so I'm not really in any danger of going through and making a hole in the paper. But if I want to come back and paint over it, and I actually will just come in with a little bit of paint just to show you. Uh, so maybe it will show up. There you go. You can see that it's not going to give me a nice, smooth, even coverage. Where it's lighter over here, this area here is fine, but all of this is texture that's come up from disturbing the paper with the eraser. So what my choice is now is I need to resurface the paper, and I'm going to do that by, and I'll just place my eraser shield over the top of this. So I'm going to come in with this little disc. It's, a, it's sandpaper, and I'll give you a listing of, of where I get this. Uh, you can get it in a hobby store. They use it to sand balsa wood, and it's extra, extra fine. It really is, is very smooth. And I'm just going to come in, and again, with elliptical shapes, I'm going to go over the surface of the paper very, very gently, very gently. And what this is going to do is it's going to remove all of the little uh, particles of the paper that have lifted up. I usually go wider than the area so that there's an integration. Again, I don't want to make a divot or a hole in the paper, so I'm fairly gentle. And you can come in with a kneaded eraser if you feel like it's getting dirty just to kind of clean it up a bit. Turning it to the side will help you see whether it still needs a little bit more sanding, but right now it's looking pretty good. And also going over the surface with your finger, you can feel it. When I go over the area that I painted, I can still actually even feel, and I can feel it, see it's actually pulling up, see that? So you really want to be careful that this doesn't happen. And on this side, I can feel a little bit so I'm going to come in and sand it just a little bit more to smooth this out. And that is feeling much better. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with a piece of tracing vellum and go over the top of the area. And with the back underside of the spoon, I'm actually going to come in fairly hard and press down. So I'm rubbing this area. And what I'm doing is I'm taking all of the little fibers that have been brought up to the surface through the sponge and through the sandpaper, and I'm actually pressing them back down into the paper. I'm using a fair amount of pressure because what I want to do is I want the smoothness of this to be across the whole entire paper. Now when I run my hand over the surface, it is completely smooth, and if I hadn't painted over this area, you would not see any remnants of the spot. So now what I'll do is I'll just paint a little area next to this on top of where I just fixed to show you that it is relatively seamless. And you could go ahead, you could either leave it the white of the paper or go back in. And so an area that could have been a disaster is now going to be fixed and you'll be able to work on top of it. So the, the steps are use your bounty top paper towel to lift up any of the moisture that's still on the surface, making sure you don't press into the paper. Then number two, letting the area dry completely. Number three, coming in with a clean little bit of sponge, moistening the sponge in absolutely clean water, using elliptical shapes over the spot to lift it some paper and some of the sponge may disintegrate. You can rinse and repeat. 
Then you let the area dry completely. You come in with a small, extra, extra fine disc of sandpaper. Go over the surface, and you can use your eraser shield at any time to keep an area separated. Once the paper is smooth to the touch, you then come in and finish it off by placing a piece of tracing paper or tracing vellum over the area and then using a spoon to burnish and smooth off the paper and then the texture should be the same and you should be able to go ahead and paint right over the mistake that occurred and not fret. I hope that you found this encouraging and I hope you don't spill paint on your painting, but if you do, know that there is a way to fix it. This is Mindy Lighthype, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Mm -hmm.